Hi, my name is Carrie Case, and I'm going to be a facilitator for today's lecture. Today what we're going to talk about are phrases. We're going to uh, identify what phrases are and talk about how to identify uh, six different kinds of phrases today. So the first thing to understand is that a phrase is a group of words that uh, typically belongs together but is lacking one or more of the three necessary elements of a sentence. So fragments are usually made up of phrases and are often mistaken for sentences because they are words that go together as a group. And we have six kinds of phrases. Now, I, I don't exactly expect you to memorize each of these kinds of phrases, but you do need to be able to identify what kind of phrases they are. Honestly, um, they're, they're you don't always need to know the name of them to be able to recognize that they are phrases missing one of our required pieces for a complete sentence. So the first one is a noun phrase. And these are usually uh, pretty easy to identify. And this is typically what would, have, what would create our complete subject in a sentence. This would be our noun plus any of its modifiers. So our example here is large square bricks. Okay, so notice that the bricks is the noun part and large and square are both our adjectives. So this together is a noun phrase. And it, it's a group of words that sound like they go together, but unfortunately this is only the noun and modifier part of our phrase. It doesn't have a verb or our complete thought. Now the next one, um, and one of the most common mistakes for creating a fragment or a phrase is our prepositional phrase, and that's because, again, it's a group of words that very easily goes together. We see it as a group that goes together, and so we often think it's complete because it goes together. Um, but remember that prepositional phrases cannot contain the subject of a sentence and cannot contain the verb of a sentence. So because they are are technically deleted from the sentence before, for that reason, they are not complete sentences in and of themselves. So uh, remember that a prepositional phrase will be the preposition uh, all the way to the object and everything in the middle. So uh, the example here is around our old neighborhood. So remember that around is our preposition, neighborhood is the object of the preposition, and our and old are acting as adjectives in this phrase. But notice we have no subject, we have no verb. Then verb phrases. Uh, again, easy to mistake and kind of like the noun phrase is because it looks like we've got the pieces that we need, but we're still missing often the doer or in, and possibly in some cases the receiver. So our verb phrase is the main verb plus its helping verbs and any of its modifiers like its adverbs. So notice here that we have is walking slowly, could have walked, should have been walking. These are large phrases and can go up to four or five, six words together, but, um, but because uh, they do not contain a, a doer. Uh, we don't have a complete sentence in our midst. The next one is a participial phrase. We've been talking about this recently, and a participial phrase, remember, is a group of two or more words um, that begin with participles. Remember, these can be uh, adjectival phrases, adverbial phrases, or they can be verb phrases. So notice that greatly disappointed is an adjective phrase. Disappointed being our participle, greatly being our adverb, and then has played, which is our verb phrase. So again, we're missing our doer, our subject. And then a gerund phrase. And gerund phrases are very tricky, uh, but a lot of times these look like verbs, uh, but they're actually not. They're a group of words that start with an ing modifier and act as a noun. So you'll notice here it says a group of two or more words that contains a present participle, that's our ing and acts as a noun, so our ing phrase. It's also what I typically call the gerund phrase, it's our ing phrase. So running in a marathon is strenuous exercise. So running in a marathon is actually the gerund phrase here. Is strenuous exercise is our complete sentence. But running in the marathon is our gerund phrase, and you'll notice that it's an activity that we are doing. So if we had running in a marathon, um, that would just be the activity we're doing, but we need the is strenuous exercise in order to complete, to complete the sentence. And then, of course, we have the infinitive verb phrases. And remember that infinitive phrases are two-part verb phrases where we begin with a to, and then we add a base form verb to it. So in this case, to run. And, and again, uh, remember that a lot of times to can act as a preposition, or it can act as a verb, uh, as long as it has a base form verb buddy with it. Uh, and so the, these look like words that go together that might create a sentence. So remember that in, in order uh, to uh, complete a sentence, we have to make sure that we have our vital pieces. 
Remember that phrases often look complete because we know they go together. They're a group of words that go together like across the lake. So they're a group of words that go together and we often believe that they're complete because of that. But remember that we have to have the subject, we have to have the verb, and we have to have a complete thought in order to have a complete sentence. So even though those words go together into this phrase, it's not a complete sentence unless we have all three of these pieces that are required in any sentence. Okay, thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed this lecture today.